you're live. Oh, sweet. Let me know when people start coming in, if they say anything. Okay. Hello. Maybe we want to make sure that Some everyone... Some people are joining. Yeah, make sure everyone can hear me. Is can, this volume uh, acceptable? Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying? Let us know if you can hear us. Yay! Yeah, people are joining. Okay, sweet. And they're sweet. waving too. Hello. <laughs> you can see them? No, they're waving. Oh, okay, okay, little emojis. <laughs> okay. That's right. So we'll give it just a few minutes, and we'll let some people kind of cue in, and then we'll get started here, and we'll go over some razor cutting. Should be fun. I hope. Yep, they say it sounds good. They can okay. hear you. Good. good. Great. Thank Very you good. for that feedback. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's been, uh, hello from Texas. Hello Texas. from Virginia. Oh, wow. From all wow. over the place. Okay. Nice. Nice all over the world well at least united states <laughs> <laughs> michigan michigan all right all right that is one of the few states i've not been to is michigan indiana mm -hmm. I've been detroit to indiana. i haven't been to detroit detroit it's detroit right D detroit <laughs> De detroit or is it i don't detroit? know there's a, there's <laughs> i don't ask me <laughs> arizona when I lived North in New York, Carolina. When I, li when I lived in New York, my roommate, who was a hairdresser, who did uh, a bunch of fashion shows and stuff like that, he said he was from Detroit, not Detroit, Detroit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay. All right, so All right. let's go ahead and get started here. Um, welcome. I appreciate you taking your time and coming in and spending it with me, and, and I'll try to really make sure that we provide some really quality content on improving your razor cutting. So my name is Russell Mays. I'm director of content for Jatai Feather Razor, and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a shag today. So to get started, I'm going to give you an overview of how how I started. So I wanted a little pop of color around the face. So I started with ah uh oh tearing everything up. So we started with a little color, and I just put. A little stripe of color around the front and right here just on the sides so I wrapped it in the foil but I wanted to get that as close to the scalp as possible so I put a little bit of Fuji perm paper right there around the hairline to make sure that that doesn't dry out and we did that on both sides and I did just a little bit of color just around the face and you'll see it in the end result of what we did so I started doing these papers here because it keeps the hair kind of compressed on my gray haired clients that would have hair that sticks up. So I also found that it helps if the foil doesn't get all the way to the scalp, I can put that on and it keeps the hair color from drying out so bad, especially if I put them under heat, which you're not supposed to, but I do anyway. So I started with that. Now we've got our lovely doll head here. Now to start, I want to start in the bangs first. So I'm going to take a center part. And I'm going to go right to the top of the hairline over the ear. And I'm going to take probably, see where that's a little flat section, a little flat section, right there where the head curves forward, right to the top of the ear. So this is all the hair that will have the tendency to fall in her face. So I'm gonna start here and fit everything in around the front first before I start getting into anything else. Cause that's gonna be the most important part for this kind of shape is getting those bangs really dialed in. So from here, I'm gonna look at her temple and just kind of see where the hair wants to separate and it seems to me it wants to separate right there so i'm just going to pin 
that back out of the way. And I'll do the same thing over here. So it's important that I just kind of let it flow where it wants to. I'm not going to try to force it. Maybe a little forcing right there. Pull this out. Pin that back. Now we've got the whole bang section. And I'm going to look and see if it's even. And that, that seems a little bit more over here. So I'll take a little bit of that out and say, okay, maybe half of that. And we'll get that out of the way. And then I'm going to start right in the center of this section. Not too thick. I don't want to keep that section too thick. Then I'm going to take my razor and with my razor, I tend to hold it kind of backwards as opposed to holding it like this. I'll tend to hold it backwards and then roll my fingers towards me. Thumb here on the back and tip right there. Or I'll do the claw method where I'll just kind of curl these and put my thumb right there. I just want to make sure I get a really good grip and I can articulate it. I'm not looking for a death grip. I just want to make sure I hold it well. Now from here, I want to look and see where this is going to fall in her face. So I can use the tip of her nose, the bridge of her nose, you know, right here at the, the, the bridge or the little bump or the nose or the mouth, wherever I want to go. I'm going to go fairly short. So I'm going to lay my finger right in the middle of her nose and I'm going to gauge where the eyebrows are. And that's going to be the width of my stroke. And I'm just laying the razor on the section. I'm not forcing it. There's no tension. There's no strength. I just want to go through and get that cut. From there, I'm going to pivot. And I'm going to kind of look at her face and see where I want to pivot so I can match it on the other side. So say I'll pivot right to the corner of her eyebrow. From there, I'm going to pull this over perpendicular to the parting. There's my short piece right there where my bang is. And I'm going to cut that straight up and down. So I'm cutting a really severe angle straight up and down. And you'll notice that I'll start getting this kind of arc. I'll go through, fine tune that a little bit if I need to. Just a little bit right there. I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just want to fine tune it. Now from here, oops, come on baby. I'm going to comb this down. There's my angle. Come in, again, straight up and down. So the whole point of these kind of curtain bangs is that I'm cutting a really severe steep angle in it so that when I comb it down, I get this kind of movement going forward and it leaves me a piece of weight over here towards the edges. So as I'm combing that down, you can already start to see that shaping up. I think it's too long, so let's go take a little bit more off. Pivot that in. Take that off. I'm not taking it shorter here. I'm just taking off my angle, fine tuning that. I'll pivot again. Move that in. Take a little more of that off. Hold this out. Just 
just looking for a general shape of going really short in the center and building up a lot of length towards the edges. Now I'll go back, take this section, pin it out of the way, and then we'll start on the other side. Pivot, going to the corner of the eyebrow. Get my stroke going before I start cutting. And one of the most important things is that I'm not forcing the blade across the section. I'm just allowing it to glide. There should be no force required to get the razor to cut. If I'm having to push and use a lot of strength with the blade, that usually means it's time to get another blade. I've gotten a dull blade. Up, out, there's my line. Follow that through. Now I'm taking a fairly aggressive stroke so I can maintain some softness here. Take that, fine tune that, there we go. Now I'll pull this down and hope and pray that it's even. And Ah, oh, not bad, we got a little bit more right there, but not too bad. Perfect. Now from here, this is gonna be really, really heavy and really weighty. So I wanna take some of the weight out of it and it's all gonna depend upon your client. This doll head has a lot of hair, so I'm gonna to have to remove a lot of weight. Maybe your client doesn't have so much hair, so I don't remove so much. I'm gonna pull straight across, and then just gently lay the razor through and remove some of that weight as evenly as possible. Through there, using the tip just real gently laying that in, not getting real aggressive. Over again. Take some weight out. Now you can already start to see how that lightened that whole thing up. And we have that kind of feathery, kind of curtainy bang effect going. Uh-oh, don't get this on camera. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing, how embarrassing. All right. Next section straight over. Real gently, evenly as evenly as possible, start to take some of the weight out. This is just gonna come from experience of knowing how much you can remove and how much you need to leave. And the more that you do it, the easier that it gets. So we start to see we're getting this kind of curtainy effect and I'm not trying to make everything absolutely perfect right now. We can fine tune it later. Now, after we got the bang taken care of, we're gonna pin that kind of out of the way so it doesn't bother me. Now here on the sides, I'm gonna fit this in completely independent of my bang section. I'm just gonna look and see, okay, let's go about to the nose and then I'm gonna go down. But the key thing to this is I'm gonna pull this straight across the face. Get that out of the way. And I'm holding it directly in front of the nose. So directly in front of the nose, right in front of the face, horizontal. She's, there we go, we're looking straight ahead. Pull that forward and down. Think all about the length of her nose. And then just go
straight up and down. Now, if you first start doing this haircut, you're gonna freak out and think, oh Lord, that is a lot of hair coming off. And yes, it is. But the look demands that you have that much hair coming off, especially around the sides through here, because if you don't have all this weight removed from the sides, it's gonna end up looking really fluffy. And the whole look of the shape is piecey and it's lighter and it's airy. Even if it's full, you don't want it really solid. So I wanna take that weight off so it shifts the weight behind the ear. And just let you guys know, we'll answer your questions at the end. So you see all these questions coming in, just keep asking them and we'll get to those toward the end. So now to make this piece kind of pop forward a little bit, I'm just gonna hold straight down and just cut a little bit of an angle in it like that. So now that that's gonna pop forward. So the whole idea of this is I have this kind of curtainy bang that comes over and lays over this hair underneath and then that wants to come forward and jump forward like that. Make sense? No? Yes? Maybe? I hope? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right, all right, all right. So now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once you fit the front end here, the rest of it's very, very straightforward and very easy to follow. Pull this forward. I'm gonna grab a little piece here. I see, okay, it's gonna be about right there. So I'm gonna plant my finger right there, comb to my finger. Cut that down and through. Look there, get a little bit of this hair behind it off so I can force that to come forward, no problem. Now, if that hair is too thick through here, then I'm gonna go through and start removing some weight. If I want separation, right? Here I didn't want separation, but if I want separation on the bottom, then I will go in vertically and just channel some weight removal like that. So now when it falls, it's gonna force it to separate into pieces much more easily than if I was to go through and do it horizontally like this. This is gonna remove weight evenly across the section. This is gonna force separation into the section. Get that kind of come in, this kind of comes under. Easy peasy. Now from here, straight up and down part right there to the top of the ear. Now, what separates the variables of this haircut is gonna happen right now in this section. If I want the real modern hip shag where everything is like coming forward the face and you're basically combing everything from the back forward, at this point, I'm gonna cut this short like I did here, right? No matter how long the hair is, I'm gonna cut this section really, really short. If I don't want the weight to shift behind the shoulders and I want to maintain that weight in the front of the shoulders, I'm going to disconnect it from this section that I just cut here, right? And I'm going to blend it with just the top right here in the front in the bangs. And then I'm going to let this go and start getting long. Does it make, does it make sense? So I'm disconnecting this length and this length is going to be irrelevant. The only thing I'm blending is right here with the bangs. So I'll pull that forward. There's my bang just fell out. And I'll start cutting down. Here, if I want to maintain a lot of length, I can start angling this forward. She doesn't have a lot of length. So I'm just going to go straight down. You can see my, my length underneath that I'm ignoring. Right there, start to look. That piece really starts to separate 
and really show how we're getting that kind of curtainy effect on the bank. Next section from the crown to the mastoid right there behind the ear. And I'm gonna do this the same thing on both sides. Pull this forward. Make sure my mannequin doesn't fall forward. There's my line, my guide underneath. Keep my stroke as consistent as possible. There's my line. Building up my length in the back. There we go. Comb that down. And you can start to see, if I was to cut everything really short here, this would completely make everything shift behind the shoulders. So this is the part that's coming forward. When it's dry, it's not gonna look disconnected and it won't look disconnected because of the way that the head rounds. This is my quarter part. I can cut the front however I want. As it starts to round around the back, I don't have to blend front to back as long as it's blended top to bottom. If it's blended top to bottom, you're golden, no problem. Next section. Comb everything forward. There is my line. Cut that off and through. This haircut is as much about weight distribution and texture as it is about shape. So once you get the weight distribution even, you get the texture right, you don't have to be real precise. So that's something that may take a little bit of time for somebody to get used to if they're used to doing real precise hair. The more precise I find, the more precise that I try to make this haircut, the more stuffy that it looks. It looks kind of dated and stuffy and it doesn't look modern at all. So it almost demands that you keep everything really, really soft and not so perfect. So this helps a lot. Now I can do something very technically solid with the razor, but I can also lighten it up as much as I need to. Go through. Make sure we're getting that all the way forward. Right there. start lightening that up now as I do this and I shake it knowing that we're disconnected right here get that out of the way when I shake it it doesn't look disconnected right I still got enough texture from this hair here to blend down and because the way the head's rolling it's not going to stick out like a sore thumb so we're starting to get that shape get that kind of morphed over all right same thing on the other side. Now, after I do the same thing on the other side, usually I will want to go through and take a little bit of the weight out of the crown. So I'm gonna go through, take a center section from the front hairline all the way back and keep that separate. Now from here, You're gonna notice that when I hold this line up, it's gonna be this sort of angle, where it's going from short to long around the front. So I'm gonna go through, hold this section straight up in the air, and really start to take that a little bit shorter through there. How short? It all depends upon how thick and how long the hair is. The longer and the thicker the hair is, the more leeway that I have, the more I can get away 
with taking a lot of hair out and still have a lot of hair to deal with and style and do all those things with. Okay, so now after I've done that section, I'm gonna go through from the high point of the head, I'm gonna pivot, hold this into the center of the center. The first section I took, the mohawk section, and I take a section from the high point of the head to the corner of the hairline in the bottom. Hold that straight up. Not a whole lot of hair to take right there. Take that off and blend that through. If it's a little piece like that, I'll just take and change the way I hold the blade and just put my thumb right against it. Push the hair into the blade and take some of that length off. I'll pivot to the high point of the hairline over the ear, remove the center section. Now I have these two, and I basically have a traveling guide that's gonna go around the head and just take out some of this weight on top. And there's nothing to take out there, so that's good. I'm gonna take a little bit of that off. Pivot again, right here around the front. There should be nothing, and there's not. So now we've got a little bit of layering right here in the crown to keep it from being really solid and heavy. So we've got layering all the way throughout. We've got a nice texture to it. It's gonna have some movement, some lightness, some airiness, and then around the front. Now, after I've gone through and done all that on both sides, I'll go back and right here on the very front of the bangs, her fringe, if I'm British, I'm gonna comb that down and look, and I'm gonna fine tune little pieces here just so it fits in. This is where I've got the basic shape in. So now I wanna really fine tune it according to her hair. So I'll take a little bit and I'll think, okay, I want that a little shorter right through there. So I'll pick that up, take a little bit of that out, comb this down and just real gently take a little bit of something out right through there. So it gives me a little bit of an opening right there as I start to shift this to the side. I want a little lightness, a little airiness right here in the center and exaggerate the weight that builds up as the length increases. Shift that over, look and say, okay, I don't like that. Take a little bit of that off, shuck that over, take a little bit of that. There we go, that's starting to shape. I still wanna keep this heavy through here. I just want this nice and light through there. Now, if I feel that this top is too heavy, I'll go back, take these sections, let me get the other side out of the way and just channel some of it through. I can take really small, delicate little channeling to go through and remove that weight. You will not always have to remove as much weight as you see me removing because this doll head has a grip of hair. I mean, it's very nice, but it's a lot of hair. So you gotta, you gotta remove it and make it a little bit more lively. It's like a wig, you know, when you buy a wig, not that I've ever bought a wig, but I've had people buy wigs that I've had to fix. And it comes with so much hair. Nobody has that much hair. So you gotta really thin it out. Same thing with this. I gotta thin it out. Oops. Now see right there, I had a momentary loss of muscular coordination and I hit that a little bit too heavy. I'm not gonna freak out about it. I'm not gonna go, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. My life is over. Because as soon as I comb that in, it's gonna disappear. It's gonna dissipate. So don't freak out. Now don't get super aggressive and do that every time, but be mindful. And the way that I can determine how much hair that I'm gonna take out is the tilt of the blade. So as I'm holding this section coming forward, I put the blade in. If it's parallel to the hair, it's not gonna cut anything. The more of an angle that I go, the more hair that I'm gonna remove. 
right? That's gonna remove a lot more when I go at an angle like that versus if I come in and I keep the angle very, very shallow. It's not gonna remove a lot. So I can kind of like right there, there's not a lot of hair. So I'm gonna skip that and go up here and go back down there and try to remove weight from where it needs to be removed, not all over just because I'm in a groove of removing weight. I wanna be mindful of where I'm taking weight from. Okay, so now we've got the overview here and I think she's looking pretty rocking. Now, if she had any kind of wave at all, what I would do is I would put a little bit of styling cream on it, a little bit of curl cream, and I would start to mold everything in. I would take everything from the back, comb it forward, and start to mold everything into shape like this and get my kind of curtainy fringe going on. And then I would just start diffusing it because diffusing it's gonna give it more of a lived in kind of look and I'm gonna keep it flat. I'm not gonna do the typical diffusing where I'm trying to puff it up. I wanna keep it flat and then after it's all completely dry, then I can fluff it up. This has a lot of varying ways that you can style it and make it really soft, really lived in, or you can do something a lot more glamorous with the same cut. So when I finished mine earlier, I made it a little bit more glamorous, well, a lot more glamorous. And here is our end result of the same haircut we just did. So we've got that real heavy kind of bang, heavier over here towards the sides, took this out. You can see the little color I had underneath just to kind of peekaboo a little something out. Could probably do a little something in the back as well, but we got that peeked out and we've got a nice little bit of layering throughout the whole back. But most of the emphasis on this haircut is gonna be around the front. All right, any questions? Maybe. All right, couple? yeah, a lot of questions All right. here. Let's see what the questions okay. are. Did you prep the hair with any products prior to using the razor? A little leave-in conditioner. Just uh, something to help make the blade glide across the hair. Just just a little light something, yeah. Do you charge your razor for each new client? Do I change my razor? No, uh, it depends on the hair. Okay. Sometimes I'll go two haircuts, sometimes two and a half. Uh, the minute that when I start cutting, the blade, I have to push the blade against the hair and I have to fight the razor, it's not effortless anymore, then I'll change it because then I start running into the options of, or the, the possibilities of it, of it fraying the cuticle. A dull razor will fray the cuticle more and make it much more difficult to deal with. So I want a sharp blade as much as I can use a sharp blade, as often as I can use a sharp blade. Now there's times when you run out and you're like, ah, I gotta use the dull one, but I try to keep them on hand. So I always have a couple of extra boxes. Uh, how much tension do you use when holding the hair? Uh, I use as much tension as the hair requires. So let me let me phrase that here in an easier way. So when I'm going to take this section right here, I want to comb everything clean and smooth. I want everything from the root all the way to my fingers to be symmetrical, to be even. Curly hair will require more tension than straighter hair. So I'm basically on this hair only using the tension that the comb gives me. And then I'll lay my finger underneath the comb to support, but the comb is using the tension, is creating the tension. So this middle finger only supports, I get here, then I clamp, and then I clamp on for dear life. But I'm not putting my finger in at the scalp and then dragging with tension. That's a no-no, because I have inconsistent tension through my fingers, and so my knuckle, my knuckle will be more tension, and where it's gapped, it'll be less tension. So I only use the tension that the comb gives me, unless it's curly hair, and then I have to grab it to get it a little bit more symmetrical and even. Do you use different blades for different hair types? No, no. Same blade for all hair types. Now I will use a different blade depending upon texture, because Feather makes a texturizing blade, but um, that's, I don't use that very often, but it does have a nice little option of thinning it out a little bit. But I use the same blade for, well, not the same blade for everybody, but I, I don't. Same type of blade. Yeah, same type of blade. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, how wet do you like the hair when using a razor? 
I want it to where it's an even wetness, but not dripping. If I run my fingers through the hair and it starts to drip, that's way too wet. If I'm combing it and the hair starts to separate, it's too dry. So there, there's a, a fine point of where it's completely saturated, but not oversaturated. You know, it's like a wet sponge. Sponge can be damp. That's what I want the hair. I don't want to squeeze the sponge and have water going all, the, all over the place. Same thing with hair. I want a nice little tension, a nice little even wetness, and that's just going to come from time of, of working behind a chair and cutting a lot of hair. You'll start to notice that's the right wetness, and then you just gauge accordingly. Okay, and um, can we remind everybody what razor you're using and where we can get it? Feather styling razor with the standard blade, and uh, Marlo, we get it at Marlo, Marlo Beauty. MarloBeauty.com. Marlo yes, MarloBeauty.com. Yes. <laughs> the Instagram's MarloBeauty. Uh, Marlo, Marlo Beauty, Beauty Supply. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. Right. Um, what's the best hair type for razor cuts? Um, a compact cuticle is really the best type that has uh, a lot of movement, uh, movement and fluidity. Uh, the coarser the hair tends to be, the easier it is to fray the cuticle. And that could be straight hair, curly hair, Asian hair, white hair, whatever kind of hair. Um, you want a very, very soft, compacted cuticle so that when I hit it with the blade, it doesn't explode. And you almost don't know until you take that first cut. And after that first cut, you're like, oh, it's okay. But at that first cut, sometimes there are people that come in and I'll sit down and I'll make my first cut with a razor. And I'll instantly be like, no, I can't do a razor. So I have to go with something else. I have to do a scissor and then just point cut and thinning scissor to, to get a similar effect. But there's some looks that demand a razor, but you can't get it all the time with anything else. And some hair can't handle a razor. You'll, you'll, you'll learn, you'll learn. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you use the detailing feather razor, the short handle? Yeah, yeah, I use that one mostly for when I need a texture, or if I need something underneath here and I need to get real close into the nape where the, the long one is a little bit difficult around this side. So yeah, I use the, I got both of them. I like okay. them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how much finishing do you do with the razor after the hair is dried? Very seldom do I do any. Uh, I don't like a razor on dry hair. Um, I mean, sometimes I get lazy and do it, but most of the time, if I need to fine tune on dry hair, I'll use a thinning scissor. Okay. So I can get a similar kind of look without cutting a blunt line in it, but I can still start to fine tune it and detail it that way. Okay. Do you always need to start at the mid shaft down to remove the weight? Um, I think so, yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, if I'm, going to remove weight I don't want to start at the end and go against the cuticle right because then that's just going to fray the cuticle even more uh, when I do texturize I will seldom if ever go more than halfway so if the hair is this long and I'm going to remove weight I'll hit it about halfway out but very seldom do I go in further there have been instances where down in the nape, if I'm doing something like a graduated bob or something and I need to remove a lot of weight, I'll go right down to the scalp because I don't have to worry about it sticking straight up and alfalfaing over on the top but because the hair is going to lay over it. But very seldom do I ever go more than halfway and I always start in the middle and go out. Okay. And uh, what is this cut again? What is the name of it? Shag. Okay. Yeah. Shag is, is kind of like a generic term and it's basically anything that's going to be held forward and cut and get longer in the back. So Farrah Fawcett, the feathers, you know, just the way she would style it, or um, um, what's the girl from Fleetwood Mac? Oh my goodness. <laughs> no. oh. Uh, Stevie Her. Nicks, Stevie <laughs> Nicks, you know, the, that, it's a, Joan Jett kind of had a little bit of one, but you know, a little melody, but I like okay. it. Yeah. Um, razoring the hair can create so much frizz. Any tips yeah. to avoid frizz other than products? Uh, sharp blade, um, middle out, don't go deeper than the middle. And if it is a certain type of texture that doesn't handle the razor well, don't use a razor, use a blade. There are some hair that, that frays a cuticle and it gets fuzzy and there's nothing that can be done about that. There's no fix to it. If they demand that cut, then no, it's going to require styling to smooth the cuticle down. It, it's, it's not, 
as, as magic as this is, this is not the only tool that you'll need in your kit. So you'll need every tool in your kit to become excellent at cutting hair. But there are things that this does that nothing else will match. But there are also things that it can't do. And on some types of hair that gets a little frayed, it doesn't work very well. So is frizziness because of improper technique, a dull blade, or both? It, it can be both or neither. There are some hair textures that if you have curly hair, if you have a bunch of curl, a bunch of hairs that, that clump together, it makes a curl. Sometimes you get those individual hairs that separate from the rest of it. It makes it look fuzzy, but it's just separated curl that hasn't clumped in with the rest of it. Does that make sense? So you get these individual hairs that look like frizz, but it's not really cuticle frizz. So that's completely different. A cuticle frizz is where I run my fingers through it and it gets tangly and I can feel the, the cuticle raising and catching the other hair. Individual frizz, like this hair here, is separated from the rest of it, but once I comb it in with, with that, with the rest of the hair, it clumps together and makes a curl. So, yes and no. Okay. So, sorry, <laughs> that's not a very good answer. I apologize. All right, we'll just do a couple more yeah, questions. Yeah. Um, can you use the same partings and technique with scissors? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're gonna do this haircut with a scissor, I would point cut it. I would not uh, blunt cut it. I would I would definitely point cut it all the way through. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can you do this cut on curly hair? Yes, absolutely. Be careful and mindful of how short you go on your first bang section, and also uh, how thick you take this first section onto the side. I don't want to take so much hair on curly hair that it starts to puff out and separate from my length. So I have to be mindful of the connection. I can't disconnect it as much on curly hair as I can on straight hair. It has to blend a little bit better. Okay. Or it gets lumpy. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's it? All right. I hope that was worth your time. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that uh, we've improved some of your razor cutting. Uh, Jatai Academy has a free course that goes on and shows everything. And I'd like to thank Marlo Beauty for having us and buy your razor from them. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. And also follow us at Jatai Feather. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. How was that?